We decided right. to build a nest for it right there and then. However, thinking back, that winter was unusually cold. With fierce winds at night in the yard. Not to mention the many poisonous bugs and wild beasts in the vicinity. It was clear that if we left the fledgling in the yard, it's a bird is hurting my ears. Until spring. <laughs> so, I suggested we take it inside, place it on the shelf by the window, and asked the adults to fashion a cage for it. Okay. We decided that when it regained its strength enough to spread its wings, we would release it back into the wild. So when we did things go bad for you? Something that we'd never considered was that this bird's fate had already been determined long before this moment. Its destiny was determined by our momentary whim. Now, I pass the power of choice to you all. Faced with this situation, Oh no, I'm scared. Will you make? Stick to uh... the Build a nest with soft net where the Charmony dove fell. Or build a cage for it and feed it, giving it the utmost care from within the warmth of a home. Uh, I eagerly await your answer. Oh my Jesus, this is actually a hard decision. <laughs> Alright, others, let's speak to March first. She has a pretty good moral compass. That guy just casually throws this kind of question at us? What exactly is his deal? But fine. I'll answer I'm kind of wanting to if build a nest. Me, I guess I choose to build a cage for the little charming Because After all, leaving it there, it's bound to get hurt by wild Oh my god, so that's the natural selection part, right? No, but they could be both the natural selection. But, you know, humans are a part of, you know, the natural selection as well. They've so you select them to survive. You know, they're still being selected. Or if you try to have them survive through other means, they're still being selected. So is any choice really different? Like, morally. Okay. Decipher his intentions right now, but based solely on that question, I would probably choose to build that dove a cage. Oh, I don't Even know. If I was gonna release it back into the sky, it'd have to be strong enough to fly first. You know what? Yeah. If I left it where I found it, I fear it'd never get the chance to fly ever again. Yeah. Now I think about it, if my dog was like. It looks like he really you know, a wild has animal no found in in him injured. Uh, if it's just a quiz, I wouldn't just leave him there. Suppose it's fine to humor him. Back to the question. I would personally choose to build the little charmany dove a cage. Yeah, same here. No special reason. I do think that a fledgling should have the right to fly into the sky. But if it can't even live to that point, then there's nothing to talk about to begin with. Thing is, though, what if there is a, re a right answer here? You know, I I'm just gonna go with it. I'm happy to see that you made a choice similar to ours. If your mind is made up, let me reveal the outcome of this choice. Does he die? He passionately nursed it back to health, preparing only the best food for it every day. We even preened its feathers. Later, on the day that Robin left Penacony, we opened the cage door and let it fly back into the sky. And it I watched died. It for a long while by the window, probably about three or so days. In those three long days, the little Charmany dove tried again and again to spread its wings to fly into the sky, but fell to the ground. Only to keep trying. Is this the wrong decision? On the hundred and thirty-seventh attempt, 
It succeeded. But its attempt did not go perfectly. After flying unsteadily for a while, 137 it fell to the specific. How do you remember that? Unable to grasp the direction of the air currents. The fall shattered its wings. It writhed helplessly in my embrace. Jesus. But it was all for naught. Finally succumbing to a painful demise. And in that instant, our I don't know tender though, man. Care, our given love and hopes. They all became the inevitable push that sent it to its death. I deeply regret the choices we made. Next, let us head to the second decision. This time. All right, I need to think what I want, not dream what's morally right. Like from the this story, lo straight, was looking straight into it. Melodia. This meant to mislead you. Exclusive to the so gotta think about it logically, not charged with listening morally. To the and vexations of dreamscape residents, and providing them with the relevant. Unless it really has no difference to the story, but who knows? It was during that period that I had the opportunity to hear voices from all corners of the dreamscape. Joy, sorrow, arrogance, regret. The complex tapestry of human nature that formed the world. And I was fortunate to catch a glimpse of it. Okay. He was a dream chaser and an illegal stowaway. Just like the rest of them, he came to Panacone in search of a better life, except that, to most people, the price he paid. I suppose you could say it was everything. Oh, so he was he only sacrificed me. everything. I saw yeah, everything his children and that. Yeah, oh, that's horrible. The house, the land, even his two children. He said he could not afford to raise them, and that... At least they could eat if they lived as slaves. He had a plan in place. He would buy back his children once he had made his fortune and enjoy Panacone's beautiful dream with them. Alas, his plan to smuggle himself was somewhat clumsy and he was sniffed out by those pig-headed hounds. After hearing the dream chaser's story, I immediately appealed to the Bloodhound family to cease their pursuit. That way, at least he could live peacefully. But I was still too naive to the yeah. ways of the world. I did not anticipate that what I thought was a kind gesture would later lead to dire consequences. I'll tell you the outcome soon. For now, oh god like damn it, this is actually hard. Will you do as I did and try to convince the Bloodhound family to stop their pursuit so that the Dream Chaser may live peacefully and realize his wishes? No. Or will you remain silent, leaving him to languish while the hounds are hot on his heels? No, actually. Until his inevitable judgment arrives. No, no, I'm gonna. I don't care. I look forward to everyone's decisions. Who knows? I know what Perhaps to do. Might even alter the outcome of this tragedy. Seems illegal stowaways are really quite common on Penacony. But that guy in the story. Yeah, he I doesn't. Don't think he does Yeah, I know what my decision's gonna be. With that thought, there's only one choice. Let the bloodhound send him back home. This person deserves to be punished. A dream chaser story. If I acted out of kindness, I would probably no. ask the bloodhounds to stop their pursuit and lend him a hand. I don't believe that's but the right thing to do. What cruel repercussion would this choice result in? I think Sunday must have been deeply impressed by the limitations of the strong defending the weak through this incident. 
Right, Firefly. This question. Surely it has some connection to the baby bird story. And this connection is precisely the breakthrough. Did he end up murdering someone? Like outside of the dreamscape or probably choose to ask the bloodhounds to cease their pursuit. I'm going with March on this one. Is that really right though? I'm doing it. It seems you, like me, are pondering whether a different choice could have led to a Oh, Jesus Christ. Sadly, his fate would only be more tragic. Say he never gets caught. He would only die from delirium. The methods with which illegal stowaways enter dreams are unorthodox. Not flawless like the hotels. Living in the dreamscape would be a mere pipe dream. Should he be apprehended? Could the hounds afford to turn a blind eye? The answer is a definitive no. They couldn't bear the resulting consequences, and thus wouldn't dare extend a helping hand. Oh, Jesus. As to your choice, I once again offer my heartfelt apologies. This is a really good way of Next storytelling. Comes the third and final decision. And the story this time is my own. Alright, this is gonna reveal something. This story happened the day I was appointed the Oak family head. At that time, Mr. Gopherwood was the current dream master. And so as who's the wish, emanator of harmony? Had a private conversation. That's what I'm wondering. Because if he is in harmony, then what is he? Deliver a letter to me. He let me read its contents, and it was a letter from my sister. Um, what did it say? The letter contained the usual pleasantries, anecdotes from her travels, nothing out of the ordinary. Just as I started wondering how this letter related to our discussion, the dream master began to speak. All right, I'm really Do you curious. Know wrote this letter? Okay, uh... All right, predictions. No one, I don't know. <laughs> so it's probably not Robin. If you're saying it like My that. Sister, of course. Why would you personally visit me to hand me a letter from my sister containing mere trivialities? To help you grasp the false scope of this issue, do you know where Robin is at this moment? Uh... From what the letter indicates, she must be in Caspelina 8, correct? She's touring there right now. Has she mentioned anything about a stray bullet? Oh? A stray bullet? What? A war has broken out on that planet. It is because of this very reason that Robin chose this destination. To spread the word Oh, of the Jesus. Okay. And to save the lives of that planet. She personally made for the front lines. She hoped to ease the people's suffering with song, and was willing to brave mortal danger to deliver the IPC's medical supplies. Unfortunately, stray bullets show no such compassion. What's gonna happen? You right? If the operation was successful, she should probably be recovering in the field hospital. Oh God! Like the above, the bullet struck her neck directly. Yet, possibly as a oh my God! Consistent deeds of harmony 
It didn't hit any vital arteries. Once you've attended to your outstanding tasks, it'd be advisable to write her back. Oh, this decision is going to be hard. I can already tell. This is going to be the hardest one yet. Damn savages! I'll pack my bags right away. My gratitude for bringing this to my attention, Mr. Gopherwood. Now you understand why she always wears such elaborate neck ornaments, don't you? To hide the wound. How could this happen? Miss Robin? It's all in the past, so please don't worry. I share this in the meager hope that you will understand the harmonies, limitations, and predicament. So can she not see in the real world anymore? The strong defending the weak sounds many times. It is nothing more than wishful thinking. Huh. Likewise, I've prepared one last question. One last choice. But rest assured, this choice will not have any grave consequences. So they go because to the same. This is a figment of imagination, a nightmare that has haunted me through countless nights. If you oh, have the no, 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 no. choice like I did, to decide with the order, still support Robin's journey on the path of harmony. Oh yeah, because it's her choice. Let's see what I was saying there. of similar scenes on certain nights in the dream i see yeah, there's no mold really right moral choice I don't here know who they are but i sympathize with all of them fighting for survival against some Wait, what? unfathomable force their confusion and fear are lucid to me but i also remember they chose never to give up. No way she's talking about the Honkai with the like uh, universe, right? So it's weird. If Mr. Sunday's question leaves you puzzled, you should find the answer from your own experiences. With each trailblaze, dangers and tribulations will surely follow. But would you ever back away? Yeah, you can't stop would someone. Would you stop March and Don Hong from reaching their next destination? Either way, it's not going to happen. It's going to end the same way, either way. Like Taylor Swift. You also can't sing, but... Like, that's because you have the talent. <laughs> Side Robin's destiny. You can't do that though. Only they can. You can't decide someone's destiny. Miss Robin. The strong defending the weak is a great mantra, but if I had to pay such a price, I I don't know what I'd do. Alright. Support her. Yeah. I see. I am now aware of everyone's stances. Raising these questions merely serves to illustrate one point. The plight of Panacone cannot be salvaged by the harmony. The true foundation for a sweet dream paradise can only Mate, be you're making no sense to me. With a strong government. I know the suffering of being tormented, the turmoil of losing your way, how sorrow and even despair set in when matters don't work out. All of this causes me to me he just sounds like a psycho because this is not what happiness is at all. We must teach the weak how to live a happy life. And this life isn't some noble propriety that the upper crust preaches, but in definitive terms, a way of survival that belongs to everyone. So what is your definition of living a happy life? 
Also, just because you support someone doesn't mean you agree with it. That's why I chose that. Consciousness is fundamentally an illusion. A cage. And just because you don't support them doesn't mean they're gonna stop People doing it. In by this illusion, make mistakes. Yet still ask that external influences bear the burden. When one mistake after the next permeates the masses, they become impossible to trace. Thus, the amassing of these individual cages culminate to form a prison. A place dictated only by the rule of survival of the fittest. <laughs> I really Nature don't like how this is going, I'm scared, bro. And sacrifice. Its antithesis is known as order. That is what I want to do. Unite people's happiness under the banner of order. They won't need to make bitter choices any longer, nor face the weaknesses of humanity. But that's not true for either. They can cast aside their primal instincts to build a haven for mankind. <laughs> Simply describing thoughts is far too abstract. So allow me to provide a simple example. As you all may know, there are societal norms like weekends and yep, we got them here. weekends that exist on some worlds. I wonder if Earth exists in During these hard -earned this universe. Because it doesn't mean I'm back for this universe. But the most of the story takes place, life, I'm pretty sure, so. Allowing a certain tranquility to return to their souls. And it is only on these days that people do not have to adhere to the law where the strong prey on the weak. They can live out their lives happily during these brief intermissions. It's just a pity that two or three days are still too fleeting compared to the span of a lifetime. From where I stand, society's ideal system should be seven rest days. Following something, <laughs> there should ensue a second, a third. And indeed, an infinite procession of Sundays. No, nah, man, you're mad. Should be the face of the new world. I don't care what anyone says. You're crazy. Eternal, peaceful days. And thus, every person can return That's to just their giving up. selves in this utopia. Some gaze in reverence at the stars, pouring their whole beings into calculating the distance between us and the isolated world of Pagana. Meanwhile. Some seek refuge in quiet corners, holding one another, unencumbered by the chains of unwelcome obligations. There would be no need to bear the hardships of reality. Only in this way can humanity face the. I don't know, man. With the I don't hate him spirit. anymore as much, but. Living a life of dignity. I still don't like him. This is what it is to live in bliss. No, it's really not. Miss Firefly, you who are stricken with entropy loss syndrome, you of all would oh, surely no. understand this. No, no, no. <sighs> Maybe so, but. It sounds like a flawless theory. Is it really <sighs> the right choice? is minute, merely a personal and eternal sacrifice. If this paradise is to be maintained for everyone, someone must remain trapped in solitary awakening until the end of the cosmos. Oh no. Awakening? Which means that this so-called paradise is still a dream. Stepping into this paradise means forsaking reality, correct? VR. <laughs> For VR chat is the light. Forsaking, but transcending flesh, blood, sorrow, weakness. If the physical is the root of spiritual suffering, it is only logical that we defeat it. If they're stuck in the dreamscape, it'll be the same as killing them. But in this supposed bliss, people won't have defeated their demons. Exactly. The chance to overcome their tribulations would be forever lost to them. In other words, it is an escape. That's another way of understanding it. 
But there is no shame in escape. On the contrary, the seeds of escape exist in everyone's hearts. I think Sunday's being Don't completely you know manipulated here. Fly. And as to why we sleep, it is because we are afraid to awaken from our dreams. No, it's not, it's because our bodies were shut down and we would die if we didn't sleep, but whatever. Only in acknowledging this can we truly understand the frailty of human nature. Also, some people don't dream whatsoever. Show compassion and protection. Why? Also, has everyone forgotten what nightmares are? You are <laughs> Your perspective on humanity brims with pessimism. Yet you express compassion for all. Even when your heart pities them. But unlike you, I live for the self. From my perspective, individuals making choices for themselves is their birthright. Yep. The want to escape exactly my point. may be innate in the weak. But whether they are weak or not, it is so not it turns out Sunday was the idealistic one the whole time and Robin That's was the realistic not. one. You also view me as weak. <laughs> because I don't think so. No, she's the exact opposite, Burr. Since Miss Firefly has said her piece, the Astral Express will also naturally give Fuck you, you motherfucker! That's what I'm gonna say. We'll leave it to you. Just as Mr. McHale instructed before. Tell him our choice. Fuck you, motherfucker. You are a wanker. Oh, okay. Not long ago. What is this place? Does this place ring any bells, Misha? Wait, wait. Oh, I, this. Okay. I don't know. But. This I must have been happening when we Misha, were talking to. What is this place? Uh. Fucking sparkle in that earlier. Whilst we were robbing. To the Astral Express by a nameless, but weirdly, when we entered it, it was completely empty. Doctor. Yeah, so we're gonna find out Misha is right. Me that dreams are formed from memories, and a dream bubble can't take shape if its core is empty. So I thought you might be able to help us in unraveling this mystery, Misha. As a hotel doorman, you know Panacone best among us. Hmm. I... I don't know much about dream bubbles. But if you want to figure out what this mansion is, I'll do my best. I'm counting on you then. Okay. Uh, Himeko, I still don't get it. Why were you so sure that Misha had a connection with this dream bubble? Did you not see the resemblance mm, between him sure. and Mikhail? It was just a hunch. But since Misha feels familiar with this place, my hunch might be correct. Place feels nostalgic. Exactly. This is where you and Firefly encounter death, which we now know as dormancy. Considering its, it's crazy to think to how long ago. It's not surprising. The it first Panacone update was now. The question like February. Is, I think it was February or January. I think it was February 2nd so it came far, out. It's unlikely to be that masked fool. So identifying them is crucial to us. We're drawing closer to the truth once more. Let's give Misha some time. Are we going to get to play as Misha? Because I haven't got him as a four star yet. All right. At least I don't think I have. I might. No, I don't have a him. Which Sorry. Sorry, Misha. I'm... <laughs> Maybe this way? I don't understand people that think Misha's a bad character. They've hardly gotten to know I'm him yet. I'm not entirely sure, but... Let's give it a try. It's clear he's very important. To choose the right door? Weird. Okay, I guess skip the dialogue. That's annoying. <laughs> quite different from the hotel. But... I just... I feel like I've been here before, and... Lived here for a while. 
if I remember would, correctly, yeah. there should be a fireplace down that hallway. Clocky and I used to sit by the fire. Yeah, you're the watchmaker. To the crackling of firewood. And, and the room on the other side was the toy room. I loved spreading out all the toys from the box on the floor and making up stories for each of them. Hold on. This doesn't make sense. Didn't I grow up in Dreamflux Reef? So Nope. What is this place? This could be a case of amnesia. But don't worry, Misha. It's common for everyone to forget certain aspects of the past. Not really, no but okay. <laughs> Maybe in your universe, I don't know. We can surely get them back. It is a video this game, you know, it's a typical plot point. You? The main character has amnesia, everyone has amnesia. A few more rooms and see if you can recall anything more. Yeah, then let's check out the rooms I just mentioned. Okay. Uh... TikTok. TikTok. There's those words again. I heard some noises from the room. Origami bird? That's a friend of mine. <laughs> That's kind of cute. You and Origami bird are friends? Yeah, what the fuck yeah. do you think he just said? It's a member of the Compass crew. Uh, Alright, like where is Boot Hill? Where is Boot Hill? Bird. They are a big family with lots of brothers and sisters who look the same. Oh yeah, I've met they a couple of them. They mirror's orders and handle all sorts of jobs on the ship. They're the best sailors. Sailors? Can origami birds be sailors? Why well, are you discriminating? Can you tell us more about the compass, Misha? Screw you, Mark. <laughs> the compass is a ship bound for the I wonder where fly up fly flies are, yeah. His partners travel through layers of fog to the depths of the sea. Whenever there is danger, Clocky will use a compass and guide the ship in the right direction. That's a great story. But in the Panapony cartoon, Clocky and his partners have always lived in Dreamville and never ventured out, right? Yeah. Huh? Oh, that does seem to be the case. Weird. I... I clearly remember... Clocky arrived in the New World in the end. <laughs> Perhaps Clocky has a hidden past. He's actually a meth so, dealer. Where has Clocky gone? Did he leave to protect Dream? I mean, um, I, I don't, I don't think I should say any more drugs. <laughs> I don't want to get demonetized. Mikhail, that's the name. Now we all know him as the Watchmaker. Yeah. So, who is he talking to? Do you know anything about it, Misha? Might be his grandfather, though. I'm sorry, There's still that possibility. I don't know much about the Watchmaker, but Mikhail. Anything special about that name? It's very Mikhail similar to yours. Is. I knew his it. Grandpa's name. <laughs> I fucking knew it. Grandpa. Do you mean you're the Watchmaker's grandson? Who's the mom? <laughs> Gallagher. <laughs> The watchmaker having descendants, and the name Mikhail is not rare. Perhaps it's merely a coincidence. Could you I tell don't us think more so. about your grandpa, Mikhail? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. same color hair as me. You know, I'm pretty sure it's obvious, guys. You should probably, you know, catch on by now. Storms. He was always on the sea and had lots of friends who accompanied him on his travels. He didn't want me to call him grandpa. It's fucking boiling in the UK at the minute. Old. Genuinely, it's draining me of all my energy. The name Mikhail was given to him by his parents, Mihaly and Elise, both renowned seafarers. Huh. Every time he came back, he'd share his logbook with me and tell me about his adventures at sea. Yeah, this was an, I he wasn't in the sea, he was in space. Just like him. It appears that the seafarer has nothing to do with the watchmaker. March, so are you it's dumb? Just a coincidence? No. So, where is your grandpa now? They literally have the he same fucking hair color. New journey. And it's 
been quite a while since I last saw him. He's dead. Saw him in a chair earlier. I think I hear the sound of water. Someone taking a piss. You mentioned there's a magnificent fountain up ahead. Yeah. It's the one right in here. This one right there. The water resembles a precious jewel embedded in the dreams of all seafarers. Every time I gaze at the shimmering lights beneath the waves, it feels as though I'm back in this place, standing by your side. Have you recalled? He's remembering quite a bit, it seems. Yeah. I saw these sentences in Grandpa's logbook. He used to say that despite the perils of the sea, whenever he stood on the deck in the afternoon, Overlooking the sparkling waves. Is Misha the watchmaker's he legacy? In front of his house. He often said that those moments felt like returning That would to make sense. And the difficulties at sea. Would the log but be the legacy? Uh, you know, I quite understand both? such sentiments. Who knows? Y you might be. Perhaps every adventurer far from home. You know, you don't really have many memories either. Within their soul. Even though the other side of the sea remains shrouded in the unknown, the fountain in front of his house serves as a compass, leading him back to his cherished ones. Uh huh. Yeah. While Grandpa was at home, we would stand by the fountain and place the compass, a toy boat that I made into the pool. Back then, I would ask him when I could go on adventures like him, and he would always laugh and say I was still too young. Well, it seems Intriguing. This is truly a seafarer and has nothing to do with the watchmaker. March, are you that yeah. dumb? Based on Misha's recollections, the scenes in the dream bubble appear to be his childhood memories. According to Misha, he was clearly born on an oceanic planet and led an ordinary life with huh. no connection to Penicone at all. Could this be some sort of metaphor? Three Fantasia. Sea refers to the memory zone. I'm sorry. I don't know, but my memories keep pouring out uncontrollably. Like water flowing from a fountain. Uh -huh. Perhaps I'll, I'll remember more things if we go further. Maybe you will. Wait, two seconds. I'm just going to check how many gigabytes of storage I've taken up. Is it side, right? Yep. No. We oh, okay. Never mind. Sorry, Misha. So I've been for this door before. Up ahead is Grandpa's study. Yeah, I've been in it before. What the fuck? Okay. The atmosphere in this room feels totally different. Still wondering where Firefly is. Probably doing something completely different, but. Got some French vibes to it. Are those it's got some Fontaine some vibes. Books left behind by that seafarer? Yeah. Whenever he came back, he placed a logbook on the bookshelf in his room. They contain records of his expeditions to every corner of the world. Damn, the world has corners. Does that mean it's flat? Oh no. At some point. The sea started to gradually swallow up the land where people lived. To ensure that everyone had land to settle on, he had to continue exploring the sea in search for the source of the rising seawater. On that I'm day, just vibing to the music. he called me to his study. 
telling me that he was embarking on another journey. However, I could sense the gravity in his expression. It... Oh. It was the same look I had seen on my father's face. So who's your father For then? That's the question. Marriage. Does... I asked him if I could go with him. Is the watchmaker a title that gets passed down? Elsewhere. So it must be, must be me sure if that's the case, and but I don't know. patiently await a certain sound at the door. What sound? He told me about a vast ocean in the sky. Told me about an ocean of stars. Skibbity Rizzler TikToks. He spoke of a train. And all that shitty brain rock. Children with a desire to venture far away. Just watch a video on that shit. The sea I don't understand how kids can be entertained by that. Stopping. He said that he knew the crew on the train. And that he had asked them to take me along. He said the journey I had always dreamed of. <laughs> okay, can we just get into it? A train? Could it be? Yeah. It's, it's the Astral Express. I, I remember now. Grandpa's friends are a group of nameless who came to this world to resolve a disaster caused by a star. Yeah. Then, he gave his pocket watch to me. The watchmaker. Treasure. Appearing in every one of his adventure tales. He explained that difficult times were ahead, but assured me that the watch would guide me. He said, as long as I kept moving forward, I'd eventually reach my desired destination. That was a weird look. <laughs> Makes a bit angry, mate. It was as if I heard the distant sound of a train whistle. Echoing throughout the room. Huh. Exactly, Misha. And then we followed that whistle, didn't we? Yeah. Sure, Cocky. Whatever you say, Cocky. I think I can still find the way we I'm gonna took fucking back cock then. you in the face, mate, with my Glock. This is the dream jigsaw, right? So we're supposed yeah. to find the exit. Oh, it looks like the. Where can we find the? One of Black piece? Swan's exits. Exit thing is there. You said you obtained a mysterious shard when you stumbled into this place. Yeah. Hey, Check the shape seems to match. <laughs> so this shard is also connected to Misha? Looks like we're Probably. just one step from revealing the truth. Let's get to the other side and investigate. Oh, that was in the White Knot song. You gotta go to the other side. Is something. Oops. There you go. Sorry, what? Oh. Oh, that was so hard. My nuts almost fell off because I was here for so long they were fucking decaying. Well, the this dialogue made me want to chop off my nuts. This I hate long drawn out. But, oh, that's the place from the White Knight trailer. That little clock on the wall. Yeah, that's... The exact place we walked out on. Secret base. Here, I learned how to repair clockwork and gears out of my fondness of precision mechanics. In my dreams, I was the captain of the compass, embarking on adventures yeah. with my companions, Clocky and Miss Mirror, in search of the new world. Okay. I. I was born and raised here. Yeah, not really so a surprise. This building in the dream bubble is your childhood home. Yes. Yeah, that's the weird spiral place exactly. that the trailblazers walking down in the precise. White Knight music video. This dream bubble itself is my home. Okay. <laughs> Looks like you've remembered everything now. Now, let's get to the point. God, you're so dumb. Marge, do you remember when he mentioned a clocky that only he could see? Yeah. Yeah. Go the on. Little guy here, right? 
Can I give her a little hint? But we all saw him in Dreamflux Reef, right? And Mr. Yang even greeted him. Looks like everyone on the Astral Express has a childlike spirit. The answer lies in the Astral Express. His experience shows that neither Firefly nor Akamai she saw it can see this clocky. After. And when we were in Dreamflux Reef, you may have noticed that for some reason, nobody outside of the crew had ever talked with Clocky. Yeah. I've always said this. A mimetic life that can only be seen by a select few. It's just like a hidden message left by someone for the nameless. Yeah. But Misha can see Clocky too, right? They even grew up together. But Misha hasn't started the way of the trailblaze yet. I wonder why that is. That's the key to the mystery, March. <laughs> now, take a moment Bro, to I, I knew it. I was so onto it. Have you ever seen anyone outside of the crew interact with Misha? Uh, wait. Uh, uh, no way! That's the answer, March 7. Wait, was he just glitching out of nothing? And I, I'm a dweller in this dream, just like a memory's own meme. <laughs> I should have stayed here and waited for you. But when reality and memories merged, I unconsciously pushed open that door. So technically, he is the Watchmaker's the legacy, as I said, so but. The legacy was left to us the whole time, so. Rather, the stuff inside ran away? Uh, cool and way of turning it, I guess. Was the sound of the express arriving at Penacony? That's one way to see it, but I believe there's a longer story behind all this. It's best for Misha himself to explain all the details. Can we get to the gist of it? How because. We start with your name. Now, should we call you Misha? Or... Mikhail. Thank you all for helping me rediscover my true self. Now, please allow me to reintroduce myself. JFK. I was born on Lushaka in the Presmere system. Adopted by oh, okay. Mikhail and Char. So he's not Mikhail. Name that carried their hopes. Mikhail Char Legwork. Or so Oh, okay. Yeah, so your name is Mikhail. I fucking knew it the whole time. If you prefer, you can call me by a more familiar name. The Watcher. Yes. I knew it. I said this from the start. Yep. Unfortunately, that legendary figure is no more. I am only a You could call him. Is a legacy. As for the child who has been with you, he's the innocent protagonist of Misha's childhood dream. Friend of Clocky, a young apprentice, and a future mechanic. On the he say he gets invited to the Express. And this but if he can't exist so outside this world, the then. Devoted to the trailways. Oh, yeah, okay. At the end of the journey. I left this little flame, which I so cherished, in my deepest dreams, hoping to pass it on to the nameless of future generations. God damn, the watchmaker's voice is cool. However, he somehow left the dream bubble and forgot all about his task. I apologize for all the confusion this caused. <laughs> because he was born with a desire to trailblaze, wasn't he? Yeah. I don't think Misha has you know, forgotten probably his probably why he was there <laughs> as a and trailblazer. He mistakenly appeared as a hotel doorman in his dream from the very beginning. The one who brought our unconscious friend here must have been Misha. If that's the case, we encountered the Watchmaker's legacy from the beginning. <laughs> I called it. it. Well... I have, I have a sarcastic, sarcastic friend, friend who says I always take big detours and end up back where I started. Perhaps that's what every nameless has to go through. I like the way I've synced it up completely, perfectly. You found me. 
I'm sure you're all wondering what my legacy is. I believe my hound has mentioned the Stellaron and my will. If I may apologize, the Stellaron part is real. As okay. for my health, however, it's not. Yeah, I don't really care about that. I left my homeland as a child and embarked on the journey of Trailblaze. I traveled to various planets until finally reaching Esdana, where my friends. Gallagher has to know about this, surely. In some form. future ever since. I've been moving forward all my life. Doing what I could to overcome the obstacles in my path. But ultimately, my journey reached its end. And I left behind no possessions worth entrusting. Oh. So, that's all good. I don't really care. <laughs> worn out train engine that can be called a legacy. I suppose it's the things that are still burning in the engine's furnace. Okay. Now that you're well aware of the current situation, what is it? Penicone, I certainly yeah, of course I will. Help me get this world back on track. But I'll leave that so this is that promise to him. The we know what we're doing. We're fucking kicking Sunday's ass. Others. All I have for you is a story. A Balamori. What's the story of Balamori? What you'd like to know? It has accompanied me throughout my life. Bellamore. And has been blessed with the Sorry. presence of so many great people up to this day. If you know what Balamore is, and my hat too. Uh, watch it. It's a very good kids show, it's funny. PC Plum. Some people might know we took it up the bum. The trailblazing expedition. Never end. Oh, I'm sorry. For now, <laughs> I just want this dialogue to end because I knew who he was the whole time. Once you've made up your mind, open that door and enter the long dream of an old man. Are we gonna get a cutscene or like some actual backstory? Bye, Misha. Sorry, the watchmaker. Let's make a decision. Yeah. Although I don't think anyone will have any objections. Full cool. I want to witness the legacy. Yeah, I'll choose the trailblaze. Of course. We've come this far. It's exactly what I am, bitch. Moving forward. And nothing can stop me. In that case, it's unanimous. What about well? Then let's proceed together to the end. And down, they didn't vote. And tell Mikhail our decision. Okay. He said something about a fireplace. Not that. I'm pretty sure the fireplace was like somewhere else, right? Like to the right. He said something about it. Though. That's all I remember. Mikhail, where are you going? Oh. Someone has to step up and save Lushaka. So why can't it be me, Misha? I don't know. Please don't go. And if you must, please take me with you. Don't leave me alone. Even without me, you know how to proceed forward, brave Captain Misha. The compass is waiting for you. Haven't you always wanted to be a better adventurer than me? I don't know. Now go, board that train, and start your journey. Oh, I just got a notification from Umperville. Something about Dan Schneider again. <laughs> uh, I, somewhere I over the rainbow. The car. I promised the conductor. Wait, first tell me, did you fix this watch? Yeah, he's the watchmaker, yeah. you know. Pretty obvious, bro. I know what it looked like before. Its chain was broken, the back case torn, and the marks on the dial all worn out. How did you manage to fix it? He fixed it. Well, uh, it's hard to explain, but I knew it could be fixed. Simple answer is, it's the he fixed hands, it. Mr. Amundsen. 
Its hands were intact and pointing in the right direction, so I knew there would be a way to fix the rest. I thought it was completely opposite, <laughs> obvious that um, Misha was Mikhail in some kind of way. You'll work with me from now on. Haven't you always wanted to tinker with this train? You're its mechanic now. As for the conductor, I'll do the talking. But, but I only know how to fix watches. Oh. Don't worry. That's pretty useless. That's what it takes. I'll teach you what you need to know. Okay. Where are you going, Lady? God Where damn it, can we be done with this? I know it's law, but it's like <sighs> my dog's speaking in the background again, I'm sorry. I'm staying in Astana with Rosalina and Tiernan. Okay. I see. This place reminds you of home. The people of Astana have only achieved a tiny victory and still have a long way to go. Like, I, I get this is all lore, but I've already figured this out. I'm not going to skip it, though, because I'm not petty. Like, Don't um, worry. Not everyone else who skips the story. Stars. Even if I leave the Express, our path of trailblaze will continue. <sighs> yeah. I knew you wouldn't stay on the Express forever. Leave in peace. My friend, and uh, take this with you. No, 